Hey, Matt, do you think that anybody can tell that we're filming this, like, at my house and that I'm not wearing pants, or...? You're not wearing pants? So you can't tell? No. Perfect. Excellent. Well, hopefully everybody enjoys today's video. We're talking about uh, things that are unforeseen. How low will PCP prices get in the future? Who knows? Tom and I are going to talk about it. You guys are going to watch. Hopefully you enjoy it. Let us know down below in the comments. Um, I will not get into the Benjamin discovery, but yes, I will. Crossman was buying guns from England and put it, I think Logan, and they were putting their name on them. They actually weren't even putting their name on them. They were just selling them as Crossman Logan guns. Okay. Yeah, well, that Did, didn't work. Was, early 90s? Yeah. Okay. Everybody said, well, that's Logan. Why wouldn't I go just straight to them right. and save the money? So they did. So I went to Crossman with a idea, and I, I took one gun to them, and I said, we can make a gun, and we can put it in a box and put a pump in with it and sell the whole thing for $250. Well, Ed said, hmm. He took a 2260 and turned it into a gun that worked at 2,000 PSI. That was the important thing, because you're gonna use the hand pump. Yep. You don't want it to go too high. And that's where your discovery came from. My first PCP, by the way, for the folks at home. Yeah. That was a great one. But they didn't do it for $250. They did it for around $400. With the pump, yeah. With the pump, yeah. yeah. Okay, I understand. So then, I did a blog on the $100 PCP. I remember. Yeah. In fact, I have that gun still. I just bought it back at an air gun show. And two years later, Crossman met me at the SHOT Show on Media Day, which is when we go out to the ranges. And they said, we've built the $100 PCP. And they came out with the Maximus. Well, it wasn't a $100 PCP, it was a $200 PCP. And within a year, it had become a $229 PCP. But they were trying. Yep. And, and let's face it, Tyler, a company as large as Crossman, and they are big in the ergon world, they've got a big overhead. Yeah. So to run something through that company, you, you get all this stuff piled on top of it, and they gotta make money. They're doing the best they can. If, if they could get people to work for $10 an hour, oh boy, happy day. Right. Can't do that. Right. Have we seen the lowest of the low? I don't know. You know, there was a time where that, what was it the wildfire? Remember that? Yeah, which was basically uh, for 10 those- 1077? 1077 on HPA, you know? Yeah. Uh, was selling for sub $200, I wanna say 170 or 180. Yeah. Um, I, I think right now probably the Diana Storm Rider, you know, is, is that, that low, low, low mark, like 220, 230, something like that. Or the Beeman Chief. Sure, yeah, yeah, you got a couple options there. Yeah. And you do have some pistol offerings, uh, you know, that come out of China that are lower than that. Yeah. Um, but. I'm not sure how much lower they can go because at the end of the day, you, you still want to pack the thing with attractive features. You know, that brings up one name in my mind, the Avenger. Sure. And that gun is designed for air gunners. It's designed for shooters. But it was also designed, after they got all the good stuff in it, it was also designed to be manufactured at a reasonable price. Oh my gosh. Well, it's not as good as a Marauder. Well, I beg to differ. There are parts of the, of the Avenger that are just as good as the Marauder. Sure. And there's things the Avenger can do that the Marauder can't do yep. as it comes out of the box. So... Bear in mind, it's also right. $200 less, right? I, I think you're right. We probably have gone as low as we can go. So I think what we're gonna see is maybe the prices will stay about where they are now, but the features will increase. How many more features can you pack in? Well, we want them to be quiet. We want the triggers to be good. That's a feature we could always do better yep. on. Uh, we wanna get lots of shots and adjustability. And my gosh, the Avengers got all of that. 
Well, sure. You know, I look at it and I say, okay, you know, you have one gun in that kind of three, four hundred dollar price range that gives you the adjustability and, you know, kind of the bells and whistles, right? And the side lever breach and, you know, all of those things. And then you have uh, your gauntlet, which uh, the gauntlet two in specific is really like the, the powerhouse of it's the, the uh, of the inexpensive PCPs, which I wish is you great. Had a side lever because it's a hard one to talk. I'm sure a lot of <laughs> folks do. Yeah, I, I don't find it that bad. There's a there's a way to do it and a way not to do it for sure. Um, you know, but you also have like Umarex brings out the Origin, which I think is a really intriguing offering. Functions off of a similar system to the Seneca Aspen. So there's a, like a balancer inside of that air cylinder that as you pump it up, uh, gives you less volume, but higher pressure. And then this balancer moves in the tube as you shoot it and gives you more volume at a lower pressure. Cool. Makes sense, right? Keeps shots nice and consistent, but what it really does is gives you the ability to pump the gun very few times and get some full power shots. Right. Uh, which is a really interesting concept. And it's a side lever gun, Not doesn't have all the adjustable bells and whistles, but they brought it out with a hand pump for 350. It's doing pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, there, there's a lot of interesting things that have come out. And, you know, even the Aspen is a good example of another interesting and expensive gun. Um, not my favorite personally, uh, you know, but it, it shoots typically and it's got a lot of nice features built in. Really the only multi pump PCP right. out PCP, there right now. Yeah. You know, I don't know what's next, but I agree with you that we're going to start to see more of those high end, like kind of things that are typically left for the thousand dollar plus crowd trickle into those lower price points. Well, that brings up an interesting point because back in 2006, when we, we, me and Crossman were working on what became the discovery, I told them they wanted to make the Marauder. Sure. Uh, Ed Schultz, their lead engineer, was all set to go. Well, they didn't have a reputation for building pre-charged guns. It was wrong at that time for them to come out with a wompty doodle pre-charged gun. I said, come out with this basic gun and give it a year. Not only will your reputation become established, but you'll also learn how to build pre-charged guns in this shop. And they did. They did all of that. And suddenly what you saw, because prior to that, your cheapest pre-charged gun was $600. Probably a Day State Huntsman or something like that. Sure, okay. Okay? Well, now what do you see? You, you see guys fighting at that level, at that price point. Uh, the Marauder, you said, oh, it's $200 more. Yeah, it's 500 and what change. Sure. Uh, and it's got all the features you could possibly want. Oh my gosh. So what's happened is the world of expensive pre-charge guns has sort of been busted up. However, comma, there are still some pre-charge guns that go for 1500 and above, and they're selling very well. Sure. They're hard to keep on the shelf. Sure. Which you know better than I do. Yeah, sure. I mean, your, your RAWs, your FX impacts, like all those guns are uh, selling quite well. And it, it, so I think part of that is a graduation process we've seen from users that started with a Marauder or a Discovery that are like, now I'm ready for something, for this real high end, right? They've owned a couple in that $1,000 price range you know, traded around, gotten some experience. They kind of know what they like, know what they want. And they're, that's what they're stepping into. I have an Air Arms uh, S510 sure. XS. It's the one with the uh, uh, laminated stock. Okay. And I think they're $1,700 now, ish. I love that gun. It isn't competitive with a RAW or an FX. They're more powerful, they shoot farther, but I love that gun because I know I can go to it and it'll always be what it is, which is very accurate at the distances that I'm comfortable shooting at, which would be out to 50 yards. Sure. Beyond that, no. But out to 50 yards, that's a great little gun. And I've, I've got a Meoptoscope on it. I've got a six, $700 scope sitting on top of that gun because I'm so proud of the gun. So, yeah, I bought that one. I was testing it. I was going to send it back. I can't send that back. And I almost bought 
the next one was the Avenger that I tested. It was just as accurate. <laughs> but it didn't have the trigger, right. which I wouldn't expect it to, right. being what, one-fifth the cost right. or something like that. But it was a wonderful gun. I almost bought it. But I, how many accurate guns do you need? <laughs> I want them all to be accurate. <laughs> I agree. I think, I think we all want that, yeah. I, th I think, in my opinion, I see a lot of crowding in that sub $500 price point now. Oh yeah. Right. And, and as those features start to come up, you know, and, and people make them cheaper and cheaper, you're going to even get more crowded. And I think that's kind of what everybody's trying to do. Sure. I really feel like that the next frontier for those that got into the game with a gauntlet, with an Avenger, with a Storm Rider, that don't have the budget or don't have the wanting to go $1,000 plus, there's not that much in that $700 range. You reckon that's the next price point? Uh, that's what I think. Yeah. But I mean, I could be way wrong, right? Maybe, maybe nobody's in the $700 range because it's been tried and it doesn't, doesn't exist, right? Which it has been tried, but the game's changed quite a bit yeah, in the last couple been of years. Tried at a time when the game was different. Right. Yeah. Right. So put, put that fifteen hundred dollar trigger in that gun. Right. And put that barrel in that gun. Right. And if you can, and see what happens. Yeah, I think there's a lot of. Uh, I think there's a lot of advancement still left for PCPs, right. for sure. The question is. Where are you going? Where is like the, the sales numbers and the price point going to converge where everybody can get into it? And obviously that's already started with the price point PCPs. Yep. But you do have a lot of folks that get one and go, yeah, it's okay, but I want more. Well, the guy who says that, he probably is a firearm shooter who's come over. He has an AR-15 cost him $1,500 to $2,500. Sure. He knows he has to pay for what he gets. On the other hand, air guns are changing rapidly. AR-15s, I mean, they're putting new caliber barrels in them all the time, but they're not changing right. very fast. Right. Oh, there are triggers and things like that. Yeah, they're nice, but air guns, they're, they're changing completely. And maybe you're right about the $700 price point. We'll I'd find love out. To see it. Yeah, that's the thing. We'll find out, and it's going to be, and, and we're probably not going to have to wait that long, right? You're you're going to have. I mean, every year at Chacho, there's something And you're something not new. telling anybody a secret that you know that you're not divulging. You're just guessing at this, right? Uh oh. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I saw that look. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, there, there's, um, look, at, at the end of the day, I think the competition is great for everyone. Yeah. And, and that's what maybe the folks at home that are brand allegiant don't realize. Whatever your favorite brand is, doesn't always have to be the very best. The fact that we have multiple price point options, multiple high end options, multiple options in between is awesome. And it and that competition alone has pushed us to this point, and it will continue to push further. And where we are, do you remember when a high pressure air pump cost thirty three hundred dollars? <laughs> Some still do, I know. Sure, but you can get one that'll fill your carbon fiber tank for under fifteen hundred dollars. Yep, you can get one that'll fill your gun or your little pygmy tank. Well, maybe not a pygmy tank, but at least your gun. Yep. For under what? Under uh, six, six, seven. Yeah. 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 That was considered impossible. Absolutely. And I think, going even further, we're a little off subject, but I think we're not done there either. I agree. And that's yeah. my point. Yeah. My point is, while these guns are doing what they're doing, all of the support equipment is doing what it's doing. Yep. Yeah. Now, our hand pumps that go to 4,500 PSI ever going to be so easy you can do it while you're sitting down? Nope. That's physics, folks. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 2,000 pounds, that's a good place. Oh, that's another point. Tyler, I'd like to say, we found out with the discovery that 2,000 PSI works. Sure. Now, uh, 
Tim McMurray with his uh, USFT. US, yeah, USFT. He just puts on a bigger tube, yep. and he's doing it with six, 1,600 psi. Why, you, that you can do with a hand pump with one hand. So there's places to go there too. I will tell you, speaking of low pressure things, I don't know if I can say this, so this might get cut out, but I did happen to see something. Uh, we're at an undisclosed location in Texas, I should mention. Um, and, and at another undisclosed location in Texas, I may have encountered an arrow firing air gun that's pushing 450 feet per second off of just 1500 PSI. Oh, wow. And that is very intriguing, especially yeah. for myself that likes to shoot arrows at things. Um, I shoot a $1,700 crossbow yep. and it shoots same kind of arrows at 345 feet per second. Mm -hmm. So what you're talking about is going much faster. Oh yeah. And it doesn't have to go that fast which means you can shoot out farther. Absolutely, Yeah. absolutely, yeah. So there's a lot of really cool advancement going on in the industry. Obviously it takes time for all this stuff to come to market and you know we all kind of know that, um, but nobody's taking a day off, folks. That's the important thing. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're gonna continue to have lots of cool stuff to talk about well into the future. And personally, that's got me very excited. How about you? Oh, joy. Yeah. <laughs> the Godfather is happy, folks. Awesome. <laughs> hey, Tyler. Yeah, Matt. Let's, uh, let's wrap this up. All right, I just got to finish deleting these YouTube comments. Idiots out there, man, let me tell you. Yeah, you know we're filming, right? You recording this? Okay, so uh, hopefully he's going to cut that out, folks. Uh, but, uh, you know, we don't actually delete YouTube comments here. We respond to most of them. So, uh, yeah, let's continue the conversation. Hopefully you guys enjoyed Tom and I chatting about low price PCPs, where we think the industry is going to head in the next couple of years or where we don't think the industry is going to head in the next couple of years. Anyway, let us know down in those comments below. I promise they won't get deleted. Seriously. Uh, Please like the video as well. We appreciate it a ton. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. It took a ton of effort to make these. Uh, thanks to Air Force Air Guns for helping us out filming as well. And uh, for Tom, the godfather of air guns himself, giving us his time. We appreciate it a ton. And we'll see you guys at the sixth and final part.